Hey, what's going on? It's King Kevin Dorval making this video about the state of emergency part two of Black America. I don't know if you guys have been watching the news lately, because I don't. But I would have been watching this the streets, society. You know, I'm heavy on social media when I have the time. God knows I don't have the time. But it alarms me that we still, as black people, don't get it. We don't see what's going on right in front of our eyes. Look at how our young men are behaving. Look how they dress. The tight clothes, um, pants sagging, um, the nappy hair, the, just the constant disrespect of themselves, women, authority. Now, that's just misguided energy when I mean, you think about it. The problems that we see with the homosexuality, um, the feminism, the excessive uh, feminist ways that our young men have, and even older men, is from the imbalances of energy in our homes. Our fathers are not there. Our daddies are not there. If they're not locked up, you know, uh, thank God if they're not, they're not there taking care of the responsibilities. And if they are locked up, how could they take care of home? They go into prisons, like right now, as of 2016, there sits over a million black men in prison. Now, granted that there's 2.5 million people in prison, over a million of them are black men. One million. That means one million homes don't have, don't have the fathers, their dads, their brothers, their uncles, great-grandfathers, great-great-grandfathers in the community or in the home. Now, what is it, where does that leave us? That leaves us in a community that is prone for violence, attacks from whomever, whenever, and however they feel like. Our black women, our queens, they can only do so much by themselves. Now, we know that the black woman was revered, uh, venerated as God once upon a time in ancient Africa. Um, especially in ancient Kemet, which is ancient Egypt. You see the painting behind you right there? That's a woman crowning a man. And that's the, the top queen right there of my life, my mom. Rest in peace. But see, my mom, she did as much as she could um, with her time here on Earth. You know, she died back in May 2008. And for the most part, she raised us by herself. I have five siblings that I was raised with. There's other three that I have different mothers with. We have the same father. My father wasn't there at all. And he probably never went to jail. You know, he's, he, I wouldn't say a, a weak man, but he's not an aggressive guy. You know, he just um, goes to work and holler at different women. That's what he does. And I picked up a lot of that from him. Go to work, holler at diff many different women. But at the same time, I always wanted to be a better man because I didn't have that male energy that masculine energy, that God energy in my home. You know, I only had what my mother um, imparted in us, which was faith. You know, my mom was a Bible thumping, Sunday school, um, weekday service type of woman. But then again, what about the other side of the equation? It's not there. Now, I have this Black on Black Crime Solutions panel. Um, annual solutions panel. We do it every year. It's our third year. Thank God. This year we have an amazing, um, amazing amount uh, or caliber of people that's going to be there. You know, um, we have judges, we have state attorney's office, we have a supervisor of elections office going to be there. We have um, a couple of attorneys. We have community activists. We have a wonderful host. Um, it's going to be at a church in Pompano Beach, Florida, July 16th, 2016, at Worldwide Christian Center Church. And so far, I've been raising money for this event for the past two months. And we've only raised, as far as online goes, nearly $400. Is that what a black life is worth? You know, people are screaming, why don't we do something about it? How come there's nothing being done about it? About the violence that's taking place in the homes, in our communities... And here you go, my nonprofit organization, Courage to Believe International, we're hosting this event, but yet only raised about $400. We have 
about 400 likes, you know, on a Facebook post. Instagram, there's, I mean, there's a post I put the other day. Um, it's at Curse to Believe. I put the link below. The post had about over 1,200, possibly 1,500 likes. I'm on it. And, and if we had one dog for each person that liked that, that picture, which had uh, Morgan Freeman who played in that movie, Lean On Me. And those who didn't see the movie, go and watch it. Mr. Clark, he's talking to these kids, inspiring them. And you just see all the degradation going on in that school in Philly. I mean, kids are smoking dope. They're smoking weed in the school. They're skipping, having sex, having babies. Um, they're cussing out teachers, cussing out authority. They're shooting guns at each other, shooting guns at police authority. I mean, it was straight up mayhem. This movie was published... Possibly back in the late 80s, early 90s. I know I've seen it growing up. And it was one of the most profound movies I've ever seen in my life. And, and as a matter of fact, it's very inspirational because Mr. Clark came in the scene and turned the whole thing around. Now, I'm not saying I'm Mr. Clark. I'm not saying I'm, I'm the Honorable Marcus Garvey or Malcolm X or Muhammad Ali or Harry Tubman or none of them. But I do know I stand on tall shoulders of our ancestors. Now, I'm going to show you this post. I'm going to actually read it to you. So that you, you can tell me um, what you think about it. Because this post here was like, it, it was phenomenal. Now, give me two seconds. I'm going to put it up for you right now. Because I actually put two posts with Mr. Morgan Freeman. And uh, the post went viral. I'm going to find it in my Instagram. So calm down as I speak. Now, they say that about one out of one out of every three black men will be in prison. Now, isn't that interesting? One out of every three will be in prison and will have a prison vacation. That doesn't alarm anybody. That doesn't scare anybody. Uh, I mean, for me, that is alarming and is, quite frankly, it's very scary. I certainly don't want to be in prison. I've never been to prison, but I did make a mistake when I was 20. You know, I ended up going to jail for about 10 months. And I did my time, and, you know, and while I was in there, I wrote a plan. I executed that plan. A lot of our black men and women, they have no hope. They have no faith. Therefore, they cannot plan. Therefore, they would not plan. They, would, they won't even have any sort of belief system or foundation to believe in anything they put in their mind or that's in their spirit. Because everything around them is destruction. Everything. From the relationships in their homes, relationships in their communities, in their schools, no jobs, little jobs, the lack of resources or knowledge of the resources. I truly believe that we must support every and all events, programs, teachers, mentors that are doing something in our communities. Okay, you may not believe this person is credible or, or, or trustworthy enough to donate money to their GoFundMe or the Kickstarter, which you did have successful Kickstarter last year. I thank God for you all who um, answered to that call. But it bothers me that the fact that so many people, they'll spend money on hundreds of dollars of drinks at a, at a nightclub, hundreds of dollars at a strip club, hundreds of dollars on some shoes, some clothes, some weave. Hundreds of dollars on food, on lunch. Just spend a hundred dollars on lunch by itself, but won't get five dollars towards an event or organization that is trying to help curb the violence in our communities. Black people, we must stand up. This is a war, and it is hurtful to us at this generation if we don't stand up and fight for our community. Because you know what's going to happen. These kids that we are trying to mentor and that we don't reach, they're going to be the ones with the ski masks. They're going to be the ones with the guns. They're going to be the ones that are going to be running to your house, kicking in your door, tying up everybody. Running to, you know what I'm saying? Kicking, you know, the windows of your car, throwing you out of your car. You know what I'm saying? These things are very serious crimes. Shoplifting. Selling their bodies on the street corner. This is, is not you know, some kind of you know, gimmick joke or, or some kind of trend I'm trying to start because I want to be famous or rich. If you know who I am, you know I'm already rich. You know what I'm saying? If you have a revelation of who I am and what I represent, you already know I'm wealthy in spirit and in truth. I just, the money just hasn't caught up to me yet, but it's coming. I'm wearing right now is my clothing line. My book, I, had, I know I had a copy up here somewhere. My book, The Courage to Believe. 
It's going to sell thousands, hundreds of thousands of copies. My second book, Seven Types of Queens, King's Desire, is going to sell millions of copies. My documentary, The Courage to Believe, Never Give Up, that's going to sell hundreds of thousands of copies. So I don't need the money from you guys. And I work full time. I'm a marketing director for a concrete, um, a concrete firm down in South Beach. I don't need the money. To, I, I don't need the money. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we all can use a little extra, but it's not for that. This is for our community. You know, we're trying to pay for the food. We're trying to pay for the raffle drawing. We're trying to pay for gifts full of volunteers, T-shirts, you know, for the kids to take home. You know, so, you know, something that they could take with them and understand that look, there is somebody who cares. There is an organization that cares. You know what I'm saying? I care. And I know there's many teachers, there's mentors, there's organizers. That's out there that cares. And we got to stick together and stand up together. Because if we don't do like Marcus Garvey did back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Like Marcus X did back in the day. Harry Tubman did back in the day. Look, man. Harry Tubman's getting ready to, to, to shoot a kid. A child. If the child cried. And jeopardize the whole mission of them escaping in the underground tunnel. That's how serious this is. White supremacy? Oh, yes. It's very much real. Black on black crime? is very much real. White on black crime is very much real. Look what happened to Corey Brown, Sandra Bland, Mike Brown, Fetty Gray, Trayvon Martin up here in North Florida. The list goes on and on and on. And all of that violence that's going towards our people from white people is festering up in us. And we're reacting in ways towards those who are closest to us. In the black community, that means the black brothers and sisters next to you. You're going to let go of that frustration, that violence upon them. You may not know it consciously, but subconsciously you will. My job is to wake us up consciously. Wake us up. Wake up that conscious spirit within us. God puts something in each and every one of us. If we don't stand up and fight for our people, I tell you this. And don't say that nobody cares. I tell you this. We are heading to destruction. It has already been forecast that the black community is going to be wiped out and exterminated. Because we already have a lot of us in bi biracial relationships, homosexual relationships. You know what I'm saying? So that whole black on black love thing is going to be extinct. I hope it doesn't. I pray it doesn't. It's going to be extinct if we don't stand up today and do something about it. Today is June 19, 2016, Father's Day. By the way, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. But it does not refute the fact that there's so many black fathers right now sitting in prison. The globe is very big. The globe is very big. Look at this globe. You got Africa. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm sorry, that's South America. You have America, where we are right now. We have China. You have Africa, the motherland, which is Super big. Out of all these countries I just listed here, out of all these nations, the continents I listed here, do you know that America is number one, has a number one prison population? I believe we have over 25% of the prison population on this globe, on this globe, in the world. Now, if we don't do something about it, <laughs> Who is going to do something about it? Who, what are we going to wait on? Bill Clinton to come back? By the way, those who didn't know, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, you know what they did? Their war on drugs is the ones, they're the ones that caused so many generations to be locked up. I think the prison population increased by 60% when they passed down these harsh uh, punishments on, on, on crimes. These harsh punishments, three, you know, three strikes laws and um, the war on drugs. That's really the war on the black community. But we so caught up in, oh, he's so cool. Bill Clinton is so cool. Man, Bill Clinton don't care about none of y'all. Look what he's doing in Haiti. This man exploiting Haiti and many other um, nations, third world, so called third world nations around the world. Man, people don't give a, give a damn about us, man. And y'all better wake up, man, because this is real. Now, I'm going to read this quote, and, and I'm sorry, this wasn't about, um, actually, it was about Morgan Freeman. But let me, see, let me read you what Mr. Morgan Freeman did. But I was going to read something about. Christianity, but I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go there. And the conscious community who, who cares so much about, you know, the black community. Man, these guys, man, these, these women and men don't care about us, man. And they hustling, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, no disrespect to the whole Hidden Colors movement. You know, most of us watch Hidden Colors. 
You know, Tariq Nasheed said that his whole mouth, and I was there. Black on black crime don't exist. How it don't exist, man? Come on, man. What you talking about, man? You spend time in L.A. You know black on black crime exists. You know, um, Mr. Uh, 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 Dr. Umar Johnson. I met him plenty of times. We started him plenty of times. Now, what time has he contributed to what we're doing? Dr. Claude Anderson, if it wasn't for his wife, I would have said, you know what I'm saying, he'll bust it too. You know what I'm saying? Um, Brother Polite, you know, there's one lady on, on, I don't know, I forgot what her name is, man. She'd be posting all kind of stuff on on, Insta, on Facebook all the time. Man, they don't care that, about no black on black crime. Um, Zaza Ali, that's a sister I love to work with. You know what I'm saying? She obviously cares. You know, she, she started many programs to curb the violence um, in the black community. So big ups to her. But the list goes on and on and on. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, uh, brother Sarah said it. I love to work with that brother. But the conscious black, the conscious community, man, these people here, man, they out there hustling, man. Most of them out there, they don't care about y'all, man. They do not care about y'all, man. And I tell them to their face, man. You know, when I, when I met Tariq Nasheed a couple months ago down here in Miami, you know, I gave him a book. I wasn't trying to raise the issue because it wasn't even about that. It was about black on black love. You know what I'm saying? And I love to question him about why he say. I know why he said it, because he said it. He said, oh, white, white and white crime is, is almost the same amount. I don't care about white and white crime, man. Another, anybody out here who listens to this video, I don't care about white and white crime. I care about white on black crime and black on black crime. I care to reduce that because I want us to have a brighter future. Our young men and women, they are losing faith and hope in themselves, ladies and gentlemen. That's what the problem is. If it wasn't for people like Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Henry Clark Reed, Dr. Ben... Dr. Barry Shango, Dr. Chris Francis Wilson, Francis Chris Wilson, rest in peace. These people, man, they inspired me. I've read all of their books. Said I don't have any of Dr. Ben books. Forgive me. This man has over 50, 60 books. I don't have not one of them, but I will get one. I have plenty of books here, so it ain't an issue to me about not reading. I'm looking at 100 books right in front of me right here. Doing this video in front of a bookcase, on top of a bookcase. But I'll tell you one thing, though. I'm going to read this quote. You know, and and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to let it go as is. I'm going to read this quote, um, the thing that I posted, you know, about um, the lean on me. And, and, and I think it's going to do, do justice for many people who are, you know, watching this video. You know, God bless. Imagine what would happen if each man reached back to mentor a boy heading in the wrong direction. I'll tell you what would happen. The courtrooms would be empty and more real fathers would be home instead of in prison. We'll have just as many kings graduating college as our beautiful black queens. If we study our ancient African history, we would note that if a father isn't present, that the uncles, grandfathers, and elders of the community always stepped in as the father figure. Hope was not all lost then and it shouldn't be lost today. Many of you with successful careers should be reaching back in your community. Black on Black Love is a solution to black on black crime. See you on July 16th, our third annual Crime Solutions Panel. Please pitch in your support. Share this. The hashtags I use, Courage to Believe, Mentoring, Faith, New Game, South Florida, Panel, Nonprofit, 100 Black Men, Nation of Islam, State Attorney, Know Thyself, Knowledge is Power, Prayer Changes Things. And if anybody know, have direct contact to uh, Minister Farrakhan, tell him to holler at me. My email is thecouragetobelieve at gmail.com, phone number 954-372-6336. That's 954-372-6336. That's my office number. You can also text that number. You can email me. Instagram is at Courage to Believe. Facebook is... Um, Courage to Believe International, or you go to my personal one, um, Kevin Dorval. That's King Kevin Dorval. Or you can go to my book one, which is Courage to Believe. Um, there's so many of them uh, that I'm out here, man. Please support. Find a way. God bless. Happy Father's Day. Blessings.